Can you imagine being only 16 years old, finding out that you're pregnant, hiding this pregnancy for five months, all while graduating from high school in three years, getting straight A's, graduating second in your class, taking college prep classes, honor classes, and becoming president of a student council, all while being pregnant, then having the baby and taking care of a newborn. My guest for this week shares in this episode, Kat Polsonelli is a champion for helping people to take these types of challenges in their lives and transform their lives by redefining who it is they are. She helps women who struggle to believe in themselves and who struggle to know their worth and to change their mindset so that they can have the life that they want and desire. To hear more on Kat's story and how she took this life-altering experience and was able to turn it around to be the woman that she is today, to be the mom that she is today. Tune in and hear the story. Welcome to the Masks Off for People Pleasers and Perfectionist podcast. I am Kim Gross, your host, and it is my mission to help you unmask from people pleasing and perfectionistic behaviors so that you can finally have the confidence to live the life that you truly desire. Let's tune in to this week's episode. Welcome everybody to another episode of Masks Off for People Pleasers and Perfectionists. And today I am so excited to have a conversation with Kat. She's going to share her story with us in just a moment and let us know a little bit about who she is. But I'm going to begin with a quote as I normally do. And the quote is offered by Kat herself. And that quote is, have the courage to change the things you can and grace for the things you cannot. I love that. I love that. I want to, oh my gosh, I, I'm going to let you in a minute, but I just really want to say yeah. one more time, grace for the things you cannot. That's so important for the mm -hmm. perfectionist. It is so important for a person who has perfectionistic tendencies to have grace for when he or she cannot change or control things outside of one's control. It's so super hard. So we'll get into all that in a little bit, but let's start with welcome. Welcome. Tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself. Sure. So thank you so much, Kim. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. And funny enough, I actually wrote that quote because of my own perfectionism <laughs> issues. But <laughs> lo and behold, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kat. I, goodness, where do I start? I own a company called The Lotus Effect, where my big statement is to help people out of their own mucky, murky waters where they can't see clearly and help them rise to the surface to blossom into what is uniquely them. And my story of all of that can be a long one. But if we go to the short version, I was a high performing, high achieving, did all the things kid up into my high school and teen years. I got pregnant at the age of 16, completely flipped my life around. I decided to keep my son at that time. I graduated early. I graduated second in class. I graduated president of student council. So see that high achieving perfectionism was <laughs> way back there. And I was determined to prove everybody wrong at that point in time. And so that was a lot behind the reasons why I made the decisions that I did, which ended up leading me down the path of being with someone that was totally different from how I was brought up. And I was like, Ooh, we can get away with things. He can do stuff. I wasn't allowed to do that. And so that ended up landing me in a 10 year abusive relationship where I had my second son at the age of 19. So at the age of 28, I started over literally with nothing. I didn't own a car. I didn't own a cell phone. I had to file for bankruptcy, but I had one thing and that was, I had a really good medical job. So I worked in medical administration. 
position for about 10 years. Ended up getting with someone, got engaged, bought a home, moved the family in, and then things started falling apart about four years in as I started realizing that I was doing the same things. I was yelling at my kids. I was screaming at my ex. We were always having these problems, these fights. I was doing all this stuff. And I felt like stepped on, but I was like, but I'm supposed to do this. I'm a high achiever. I always ask for more things, right? And I just realized that it wasn't working. And so that's when I made the flip. And then it just started crashing. <laughs> and I know we're going to talk a little bit about that, but yeah, I mean, it went from severing my relationship and cutting ties with, with my ex. So I got rid of the engagement. I sold my house to him. I started over, I became an entrepreneur. And then I ended up actually funny enough in the beginning stages, because I was a real estate agent, moved into shortly down the road coaching. And I was like, oh my God, I love this. I love these people. I see what people are going through. And I had so many people that love to come and tell me. And I was always able to hold that space for them. And I'd never had that for myself. It just fell from there and it, it blossomed out of it. So so now my kids are 19 and 16. When we got out of the relationship, they were 10 and seven. So they've done a lot of growth. Mom has done a lot of growth, done a lot of growth with my new husband and just all the way around. And so that's my passion for others is to help others succeed in seeing where they can make changes, where it seems so scary in order to do something different. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's break this down. So I often <laughs> talk about how we can take our mess and make it our message, which is what I hear you saying. And which is awesome. I want to take a step backwards though, because you started out by describing yourself as a high achiever, getting all the good grades and doing all the things for the accolades, the achievements, perfectionism on steroids, if you will. So you have this tendency to be a perfectionist. The behaviors are there. And then at the age of 16, you get pregnant. So let's pause there for a moment, because if you have this picture of this high achiever, straight A student doing all the right things. Is it safe to ask you about your parents? Can we talk about your parents? Yeah, more than welcome to. Okay. So did one or both of them foster and create this environment where you had to be a perfectionist, this high achiever? Was so it mom? Was... was it dad? I would say that it was the generation. So my okay. parents are still together 40 years later. So this is always the interesting part of my story that I love sharing with people is I don't have a bad upbringing. I had a really great childhood. I had really great things when I was younger. My father ended up getting severely hurt. And so from there, what we were able to do severely declined. So I've been on both ends of the spectrum of being able to do all the things and then learning to enjoy hiking in the woods. But I also had two younger sisters to paint the picture, which I know there's a lot of people that match this generation, right? My father worked full time. My mom was a stay at home mom with us three girls and I was the oldest. So it was my duty to take care of my two younger sisters, to help with them. And that's no fault to my mom's. It's just, that was the generation that's been the upbringing. And I feel like you only know what you know. And unfortunately my mom did have a really great childhood. So it's not like she had a really, a lot of really great role models to help her figure out how she wanted to parent her kids. So I do think that some of that perfectionism, that high achieving does stem from that part of my life. And I see that with so many people. And it's one of the reasons why I tried to do things different with my kids. Yeah. They were teens by the time I started switching that viewpoint, but yeah, we could, I could definitely say that it, it stems from the upbringing and being in charge and having all the responsibilities. So then what was it like for you? Walk me through what you felt and what you experienced when you got pregnant at 16. Was there, I'm curious, was there a sense of failure? Was there a sense of this is going to ruin my life or what went through your mind? Yeah, definitely. So I, I tell a lot of people that when I got pregnant at 16, that is when I think the first 
huge stressor or trauma of shame and guilt and feeling like I had failed mm. everybody came out. My family is Roman Catholic. My entire mm. side is Catholic as well. So that's another huge thing. I was known as she does all these things. She's going to do this. So what a lot of parents I've seen done, especially in that generation where they have these high hopes for their kids as well. And they expect them to do that. Mm. And I was willing to achieve those feats. So doing something that completely destroyed what dream my family had put together was not only devastating for me, but I knew it would be completely devastating for them. And so I actually hid my pregnancy for the first five months mm. before I finally got the courage up to tell them and have a choice, right? I was starting yeah. to get a stomach. I was starting to eat more. There were certain things that I was like, oh, I don't want to eat that kind of a thing that there were starting to be signs. I remember distinctly that evening because I thought at the age of 16, right? Oh, you bring your boyfriend, make him be a part of it. <laughs> Probably not the best decision. And I remember standing in the kitchen beside my mom and my dad had walked outside to do something on the grill. And I finally just broke it and told her. And she just looked at me and was like, wait till your father comes in. And I remember mm. just holding my breath and then having to repeat the story to him mm. and him immediately looking at my boyfriend and going, get out of my house right now. Right. So that was, <laughs> that is burnt in my brain, but I would definitely say that was one of the biggest traumatic events. Again, no fault to my family. Yeah. I understand the decisions that they made, but I do realize that because of that shame and that guilt and knowing that I let them down is also another reason why I probably stayed in my relationship with my abusive ex longer as well, because I didn't feel I could go back and tell anybody because I knew that they were going to be ashamed of me, that I knew that I was going to feel bad for telling them that. Like I knew I was going to disappoint, disappoint them terribly all over again. Mm. And was the abusive boyfriend, the father of your son when you were 16? Was it one in the same, was it the same guy? No. So interestingly enough, I had my first boyfriend at 15 and I thought I was in love. And then when I graduated, he disappeared. Mm -hmm. So I, my son was about a year when I met my ex at the time, my youngest one's father is different. So what I want to underscore and like really lean into to help the listeners, because this is masks off for people, pleasers and perfectionists. And it's so often that the underlying, underlying root of why we please and perform and perfect is the very thing you just said, is that at some point in our childhood, we develop this need to not disappoint. We don't want to disappoint our mother, our father, our caregivers, our teachers. We don't want disapproval. There's a fear that if we disappoint, that we will be abandoned, right? Because when we're kids, even adolescents, having a caregiver withdraw, get angry, shut down, we don't know necessarily if that parent or caregiver is going to come back around and be there for us. So there's that fear of abandonment. And I just really want the listeners to really hear what you're saying and lean into and even maybe imagine and put themselves in your position to be 16 years old, a high achiever, getting straight A's and then getting pregnant and hiding it for five months. What that must have been like for you and felt like for you to go that long hiding the secret because, again, no fault to your parents or any of our parents in that generation, or even any parent that's doing it today, we're doing the best that we can. And the trauma, as you said, for yourself that you had to live through and endure to not be able to share what was going on, how scared you must have been, how confused, how like overwhelmed 
your body was going through so many changes that in and of itself at 16. And then correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard you say that you continued to stay in school. You actually ended up being president of student council and graduated top of your class. So is that true? Yeah. I while actually, you were pregnant? While I was pregnant. Yeah. So I had my son actually during the summer. And while I was pregnant, I found an alternative school that I could go to yep. that allowed me to take him with me because that was mm. a promise that I made to my parents is that they would never be the people to take care of my kid. And by being able to go to this alternative school, I was able to take a couple of additional courses. And I already had all these other AP and honor courses that were already behind me. I ran for president of student council. And so I did that. I graduated second in class. I graduated with honors and I actually graduated my junior year. Oh my goodness. All right. First of all, kudos to you. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Number two, I'm just trying to myself imagine the amount of pressure that a 16, 17 year old would be under and talk about perfectionism, like an overachieving to first be pregnant, then to have a newborn, and then to be taking AP courses, going to become president of the student council and graduating second in your class. And again, I say kudos to you. And it's not an either or, because if we go into all or nothing, black or white, then we're being perfectionistic about it. I want to be in the gray of it and mm -hmm. say that was amazing that you were able to do that. And it's an and. I want to like, just even call out the part that can be unhealthy for some people, because this is the pattern that we can get caught in. This is the pattern that our kids can get caught in where if they feel or if you felt that you had to do this high level of achieving, performing or perfecting in order to feel worthy, in order to feel like you are okay in the world, that's where it becomes unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And that's what my message is with this podcast is to help listeners, parents, teens, young adults to become aware and realize that you are worthy just because you're worthy because you were born, not because you did all those things. It's amazing that you were able to do it all, but that isn't what made you okay yeah. in the world. And I think that's a really important part of the message that I want to call out. And I think that, I don't know, any thoughts on that before we go on to the next part of your story? Yeah, no, I would love to add to that. I agree with you a hundred percent. And I don't wish that anyone feels like, especially if you have gotten pregnant at a young age, or maybe you're still currently dealing with that or whatever the case may be. I don't care if you're 18, do not do what I did, right? I stressed myself out to the max. I was sleeping four hours a night because I decided to breastfeed for the first year as well. And I did not ask for help. I put it all on myself because I felt like I needed to make up for the mistake that I made mm. and what I wish I would have done knowing that my parents still supported me is maybe I finished school at home and then that way I could be with my kid and start figuring things out versus putting myself right back in that situation. So to anyone that is going through something that is similar please do not think that, oh my God, she's amazing. I did what I did because I felt like I needed to at that point in time. But if I could go back and do it again, and I would have known different, I would have been able to give myself grace. I would have been able to give myself time to breathe and actually intake the fact that, holy crap, I have a kid. I am a mom. I now have to finish school. And then what am I going to do down the road? Whereas I just shoved myself into everything and I gave myself no time to think about it, feel about it, figure it out. You just went for it and you became specific survival mode. I love that you said that. Thank you for sharing that add on. And what you also said that was so important is that you just shoved it down or swept it under the rug and you just went forward with what you had to do. You just went into survival mode. You didn't even have time to process 
what was happening to you. And when that happens to any of us in our lives, no matter what the situation is, we, our bodies keep the score. Our bodies hold on to that. And if we don't go back at some point in time to heal that and let that come to the surface, it will come out sideways, Mm -hmm. whether it's in a chronic illness, whether it's in an addiction, whether it's being anxious or depressed or lonely or people pleasing and perfecting for a lifetime. That's a way of dealing and coping with that tra- a trauma response. So I love that you added that on. And I just wanted to like really help the listeners to take that in that if there's something going on in their own lives, or if they have children and something's going on in their children's lives, that the importance of really being able to honor and feel the feelings that go with everything. Okay. So now that was your mess back then we'll call it. So now what do you, you do with people today? How have you gone from there to where you are in terms of your coaching and helping people? Because where you are now is in a much different place. Oh yeah. (laughs) 1000%. It led me down a really long path of destruction for my health, for a lot of things for my kids and the way that my kids were raised for such a long time, right? Because what we don't understand, and I didn't understand this until I started doing my own healing, is how many years I tried to raise my kids while I was still trying to figure out my own trauma. So you're raising your children from an unhealed space. And then we wonder why they have issues when they become teenagers and when they're young adults. We don't understand it. And that led to finally deciding that something needed to change. And when I decided that things needed to change, you would think, oh, that's when everything went great. No, actually it completely fell apart for a little while, Mm -hmm. right? I lost my four and a half, my five-year relationship. I lost the engagement. I lost my home. I had to move back into an apartment and start over. I lost my job that I was so secured to. I lost all of these things. And in that moment, it scared the living crap out of me. But looking back, I'm so glad that it happened. So glad that it happened because I was able to then redefine who I chose to be Mm. versus defining myself based on how others saw me. And so stepping into this entrepreneurial space gave me the opportunity to see, okay, I like doing this. I don't really care doing that. Okay, let's do more of this. Okay, this really lights me up. And I got to build from that. And when I started doing that, all of these opportunities opened up. I started soaring in my real estate in the first three months. I had four under contract, which is usually unheard of. It usually takes a year. I then got offered a corporate position with one of the largest brokerages in the world to help with their onboarding and their tech training because of the things that I enjoyed doing. In that process, my husband popped out, which is insane. So he's actually been in IT for 20 something years, but took a break to try out real estate. Somehow we managed to be at the same brokerage and we went to the same orientation at the same time. And when we met, it was really just to be competitors because we were both competing on who could get the most people. It just never stopped from there. And then we started opening up to each other. And then it was just like, one thing led to the next. The more that I let go of what I thought was control, the more that things started flowing. And the less that I had resistance of, no, this is the way it has to be. And just, oh, this is unique and interesting. It just got better. And so I was able to continue my healing. And now I have this amazing opportunity to help others heal in their journey as well. And that's why the Lotus Effect was created, not only so I could help entrepreneurs in their business journey, but so I could bring them peace and show them that they know who they want to be and guide them that direction. So they get to choose just like I did to define who they want to be. 
versus looking outside of ourselves. And I get to do that with everyone. And I get to be that space and that support that I didn't get. So I get to give them what I did not have. And I know what it feels like to be shameful, to be full of guilt, to feel like nobody will understand, to feel like you're going to be judged by the world knowing what you did or what you went through. And I get to tell them that's not true. And to me, that's one of the most beautiful things that I get to offer back to people. And I think that is part of what my journey was because I've always been a very strong, tell it like it is individual for other people. I've always been the first one to stand up. And now I get to do that, but in such a more purposeful and deep, profound way versus something that's just on the surface. Ah, oh, that was so beautifully said. I love that. We could just stop right there, but I do want to like really circle back and highlight something that is so profound is, and this is something that is so hard for a person with people pleasing or perfectionistic tendencies, which is to go inward and come home to oneself and look in for that trust that validation rather than what you said, looking to the outside world to say, yes, you can do this or don't do this, or this is what you should do with the perfectionist for sure. The perfectionist struggles with decision-making because mm -hmm. right. Oh my God, if I do it like this and it fails, oh my God, then I'm a failure. Or if I make a mistake doing this, there's so much self-doubt that underlies and underpins a person with perfectionistic tendencies. And often that person had at least one, if not more, domineering and controlling adult figures in their lives to tell them what to do all the time. Do this. Don't do this. What's wrong with you? Why are you doing it like that? That's crazy. This is how you mm -hmm. need to do it. My ways, it's my way or the highway or my way is the best way. And then also as a people pleaser, you're going to say my mom, my dad, they must know best. They're telling me this is how to do it. And so we don't trust ourselves anymore to know what is best. Mm -hmm. for ourselves. I freaking just got, I was reading my journal. I was just working with a registered dietitian. I've been working with her for the last eight months. Cause I have, I have wanted to heal eating issues, like wanting more food freedom. And so in the beginning, she was telling me I had to journal my food. I had to log it. She was telling me like a food plan, what to eat and this and that and everything. And then I finally said, this is so fucked up, right? I mean, that I'm still like looking outside of myself for someone to tell me what to eat or how to eat. And I finally said, no, I don't need it. I know what I need to do. And I told her, I said, Sarah, I said, this is not helping my growth in this area. And she was really good. She agreed that I needed to tap in and intuit what my body wanted rather than looking for someone outside of me to tell me what to eat. So that's just like a small example. But what you're talking about in terms of getting a new job and finding, becoming an entrepreneur, all of that stuff, you were, what I heard you say was you were checking in with yourself. Do I like doing this? Does this light me up? Oh, I don't really like that so much. So let me try this and let me try that rather than asking for that approval from someone to tell you what cat should be doing with her life. Do you mm -hmm. want to add anything to that? Yeah. And I would say that it wasn't an immediate change, right? A lot of people tend to hear these stories and you guys are only gets bits and pieces because of the amount yes. of time that we have, right? It was not easy. And I, it didn't happen in every situation. There were still times where, you know, I was like, oh yeah, no, I totally got you. And then I would drown in the amount of work that I had to do. There were still those times where I would rewrite an email or rewrite a conversation six or seven times in my brain after it already happened and I can't change it because I was still dealing with those issues. But what it did allow me to do was build up a different belief 
to be able to prove to my brain what the new truth was versus the old truth. And that has always been something I've always come back to is, okay, if I think that this could work, if I think that this might be good for me, because I feel it, let's test it out. And then I would literally have to tell my brain, this is working. Okay, but that doesn't make sense. Okay, but it worked. What if we tried it again? Let's see if we can find a pattern. So I literally had to play this game with my brain to teach it that, yeah, I know what you're telling me, but this is doing this. So this is working. So maybe this is an old truth, but this could be something new. If you think about it in the science world, we have things that change all the time. We have theories. We have all these different things that come up that they say is one thing. And then we discover more and it ends up being something slightly different. Why can't we do that with ourselves? And so that's what I had to do on a repetitive basis to teach myself that while my brain may be telling me one thing, I actually had the proof to be able to tell it something else. I love that. And I'm so glad that you called out the part that it doesn't happen overnight and it wasn't as simple as one, two, three, this work is never, but the whole time that you or I or anyone else is going through the healing journey, even though you might go back to some old patterns you can catch yourself, do something different. And all the while you're changing and it's an upward spiral. Yeah. I love that. That is so awesome. Is there anything else that you want to add or share with the listeners in terms of what you do to help others or even in your own growth before we round up? Yeah, definitely. I love sharing other people's stories as well. And Kim knows this. If you're looking for more inspiration, you're looking to find people that you can relate to that may be going through the same thing you are. That's something I share in my podcast as well called Real Chat with Kat. My growth myself is still in a process, right? I've been doing this for six years now and I still learn things every single day. And now that I have I've been able to teach that to my children. And I would love to share this with anyone who is a parent specifically, but anyone who is just in a family kind of environment. If you start growing and you start realizing your patterns, please do not be afraid to tell the people around you. That was the best thing I could have done for my boys was finally Mm. getting over the fact that I was not perfect And my kids were not going to see me in a perfect light, but Mm. none of us are. So I was creating an image that was false. And by having conversations with them about where I failed and where I wasn't healthy and where I wasn't great in my mindset, the way that their minds just took that and have ran with it is crazy. And knowing now that they have those tools that I wish I would have had at that age to me is a gift all on its own that I get to provide to them. So to anyone out there that is working on your own healing journey, please, if you have someone close to you or someone younger to you that looks up to you, be open about it. You don't have to break the walls down and shed everything, but share your mistakes, share the lessons that you have learned because you would be amazed at the difference that that makes to other people around you. 100%, the ripple effect for sure. Yeah. I love that you added that in. So where can listeners find you if they wanted to look you up? I am on Facebook and on Instagram and LinkedIn. The easiest way, if you're wanting to connect with me and see all my stuff and that's at the Lotus effect coach on all of the handles. So super easy to find me. You can also check me out on my website, which is the dash Lotus dash effect.com or follow my podcast. I'm (laughs) always sharing some weird stuff on there and some things that I've been through, but yeah, come join, message me, reach out because we all need community and we need to understand that no one is truly perfect. 100%. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sharing your story and being so vulnerable. I don't know if You were expecting me to take you that deep with your story. I didn't even know I was going to take you there. (laughs) So I'm so grateful that you played along and you are open to sharing because I am sure that while the listeners may not have had the same experience of being pregnant in 16, but I know that they can relate to the feeling 
that you had when you went through that experience. And that's why it was so profound and valuable that you shared that. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for letting me share it because I, that's all I want to do is make a difference in people's lives. So thank you for the opportunity. Well, there you have it. Another episode of masks off for people pleasers and perfectionists. I do hope that you found value in this episode. I hope that you feel inspired and that you have become more aware, super aware of whether or not you have people pleaser and or perfectionistic tendencies. It is my hope, my wish, my desire that you can find the freedom to live the life that you've always wanted, to create the life that you desire. And probably most importantly, it's my wish and my hope for you that when you are on your deathbed, that you do not look back on your life and say, boy, I wish I had showed up as my true self. I wish I had taken off the masks and allowed myself to be fully seen. That is my hope and my wish for you through these episodes. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love for a like, a comment, or if you want to review it, 